What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over what I think it's going to take in order for me to qualify for Kona, the Ironman World Championships in Kona, Hawaii, to reach and achieve that big, hairy, audacious goal that I have, plus the obstacles, the challenges, the things that I'm gonna to have to overcome in order to do that, and the current plan process of how I'm going to go about doing that. So, get excited, let's dive into it. So Ironman Kona, what it's going to take in order to qualify for Ironman Kona. Now, if you don't know all that much about triathlon or Ironman in particular, uh, there are usually 40 spots per race for a full Ironman in order to get to the world championships. Those 40 spots are divided proportionally among the different age groups. However, every age group, as long as there's one person in that age group, gets a spot. So let's say you're the only person racing the 75 to 79 age group. Basically, you just have to cross the finish line in order to book your ticket to Kona. Now, the 25 to 29 age group is one of the more competitive, not quite the most competitive typically, uh, but in order to qualify, you either have to be top in your age group or get a roll down spot. Now, for me, if I'm actually going to guarantee that I'm going to qualify, I want to win the age group. That will automatically guarantee that I get a spot. So what is that going to take? We're gonna break it down by sport, what I think it's going to take, typically what it takes based on historical data. Now you can't actually guarantee, obviously, that a certain time is going to get you to Kona. It depends totally on who shows up on the day, the course conditions, etc. So you just have to show up on the day ready to perform your absolute best and hope that your best is better than everyone else's on the day. With that in mind, at most races, if you look at the historical data, you can kind of see that if you're in nine hours, somewhere between nine hours and nine hours and 20 minutes, you're definitely in the ballpark, you're in the conversation for a Kona spot. So for me, I'm gonna target, target time is going to be nine, nine ten ish so what does that mean in order for myself what are the things that i'm going to have to accomplish in order to do that well every sport is different every person is different in each sport we all have strengths we all have weaknesses for me my weakness is the swim so swim my best swim was at ironman boulder i swim 107 and that was when i was swimming five times a week and swimming four to five thousand yards every time Currently, I don't have access to a pool. I don't really even want access to a pool. In order for me to accomplish both of these two goals, I need to put swimming off and actually run a whole lot more. The reason I think this has the potential to work for me, it's not something that I would recommend to everyone else or really anyone else, but the reason I think it will potentially work for myself is that Based on how I swim at Challenge Daytona, with the combination of strength work and VASO training that I've done, I think that I can get by with a really, really high aerobic fitness level and mediocre swim ability. I think that's possible. I think that me swimming around a one hour and 10 minute swim in a full Ironman especially one like Lake Placid where you get to stare at the yellow line on the bottom of a lake, I think that that is possible. Will it be really challenging? Yes, but the good thing is I have 70.3s leading up the rest of this year where I get to see and test this theory again and again before I actually have to go do it in a full. So if I get to the point where I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know if I can do this without swimming, then I can go back to swimming. I have said, this is just an experiment. We'll see if it works out or not. Moving on to the bike, we're looking at probably around a five hour bike. I think that will get the job done depending on the course. Now, if we're looking at something like Ironman Florida, which is pancake flat, then that's going to have to be a little bit faster, but especially something like Lake Placid, a five hour bike split, or Ironman Wisconsin for that matter, uh, a five hour bike split is like super, 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 super good. That's something that is going to take a whole lot of work for me to be able to do. And I'll talk about that in a second of what that looks like in terms of power output. Moving on to the run. Run is going to be something that is a really big challenge at Lake Placid. I'm actually going to try to PR in the marathon. I've only had two attempts at the marathon, but PR in the marathon inside of Ironman Lake Placid. Uh, and that is with a two hour 
and 50 minute marathon. And look at each of these in a little bit more detail. So what are the challenges? What are the obstacles I'm going to have to overcome? What are the things that I really, really need to work on? Uh, swimming, it's kind of counterintuitive because right now swimming is the one that I have done the least. I've trained for the least. Uh, so it seems like it might be low hanging fruit where I could get a whole lot of benefit by doing a lot more swims. But what I give up in the run by swimming three times a week and not doing three extra runs is probably not worth it. Um, especially considering the other contacts, the other goals that I have. I don't have <laughs> access to a pool, but what I do have access to is a VASA trainer. So we have a whole lot of VASA and be really specific with what I'm trying to accomplish with my gym work. Uh, and I'll probably even do a whole video on the strength work that I'm doing in order to become a better, stronger swimmer. Moving on to the bike again, uh, what do we have to work on in order to do this? Plus, oh, I forgot to mention that this is with a 10 minute T1 and T2 transition. Total of 10 minutes, we're looking at nine hours and 10 minutes, boom. Um, all right, so with the bike, there's a couple different things there. Right now, I'd say based on historical, my historical data of different bikes, different courses that I've done, different 70.3s that I've done, I'm looking at probably somewhere around a 235 to 245 watts. So normalized power, 235 to 245 watts for that five hour duration. I've done that for a 70.3. Now I need to do it for a full. I actually feel like I have the strength in order to do that. What I don't have is the efficiency, the aerobic efficiency to sit at 235 watts at the correct heart rate for that duration of time. Other thing that I think I'm going to need there, instead of trying to really focus on boosting FTP, I still want to push that up a little bit. Uh, but I, the other thing that I think I need is the muscular endurance to be able to hold either really long hills for long periods of time. So something like Lake Placid, you're just kind of grinding up for like five, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Lots of strength work, low cadence work, and then high cadence neuro, uh, neuromuscular power work combined with those two things. So we're gonna just put strength again here. Noticing some sort of pattern right there, right? Strength, strength, very important. For that aerobic endurance piece, really what I'm trying to target is to be able to do this same watts at 145-ish heart rate. So trying to not necessarily boost my FTP up, my FTP is pretty much at the level that it needs to be in order to have the correct percent FTP to do this. I just need to be able to do that lower level intensity at the right heart rate. For the run, a 250 marathon off the bike, that's a six minute and 29 second minutes per mile. So 629 minute per mile pace. Um, again, the two things that I really need to focus on there are that aerobic endurance, just being able to sustain like a nine hour day at the right level of intensity, as well as the muscular endurance, being able to bike hard for five hours and get off and not have my quads already be shot. And so I'm able to get through the rest of the day with that in mind. All right. So the last thing I want to say regarding this is that, is it even possible? Is this possible? Uh, I don't know, maybe. But like I said in that first video that I did with these two goals, the goal isn't necessarily to reach the goal. I just said goal a lot. But the purpose of having these things isn't necessarily to achieve the goal. That'd be awesome, that'd be really cool. But I just wanna push myself to that next level and see you know, what are the ways that I can make everything in my life more efficient, more effective especially during training, but even the things outside of training, how can I optimize my routines, my habits, in order to push myself to that next limit, still while balancing out the rest of my life, right? Like I could definitely bury myself in training, but I have a gym to run, I have a wife, I have 
lots of other things going on in my life. And so what that requires is just going to be more efficient, more effective in everything that I do. And that's the whole, that's the purpose of it.